So, yes, you want some of the secret sauce. All right, here we go. So the big question is, what are the top agents doing to absolutely crush it in real estate, grow their teams and add more transactions year over year while so many struggle? If you ever thought about this, you're not alone. No one has been able to get the answers until now. We spent the last few years helping agents sell billions in real estate, rubbing shoulders with top producers, which got us thinking. How can we expose more people to these insights to help raise the standard in the whole real estate industry? We then realized that we could help bridge the gap by getting secrets from the best of the best so that you can succeed. My name is Andrew Dunn. And my name is Peter Michael. Welcome to Elite Agent Secrets. So Paul, how do you actually or what do you do? What do you recommend for people to either stay in touch or get these people to the diverse attorneys when the time comes? I'm assuming there's got to be some kind of strategy because you're not walking up to the couple, like you said, and saying, here, take, take the card for the divorce attorney. You know, one out of two people <laughs> is going to get divorced. I'm assuming there's some kind of strategy that you have intact where not only do you go to the divorce attorney and let them know, hey, I have your clients, but also when the time comes and shit hits the fan, you're like, hey, you got to talk to Mikey, the divorce attorney, he'll hook you guys up. So, yes, you want some of the secret sauce. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> if you only if you're willing to share. Also, I, I, happen to keep saying, I happen to keep saying this in the background, just so everybody understands, why is there a shovel behind me? I leave it there all the time. I used to have it in a holster, but it was cutting my legs. So I started to tape it to my board when I do my coaching classes. Conceptually, dig deeper. You have to be taught how to dig deeper. That's where the oil is. The oil is not on the surface. The money's not on the surface. The, 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 you know, I always tell people you base a tree and its health on the fruit it generates, right? And I'm the guy that says the tree will bear no fruit if you don't work on the roots, the roots, depth, dig. That's some of what we're talking about today. And the only stuff that falls on the surface is the dead rotted fruit. So you got to dig deeper and get to the roots. That's why the shovel's there, just for the sake of this example. To answer your question, if we are starting with somebody with production, it's easy because you've already got the production and the people that you've been feeding. Here's the distinction between what you've been doing and what you're now going to do with this program. We're going to want to teach them two of my most favorite questions are this. When I'm communicating with the title rep, the insurance agent, the home inspector, whoever these people are that I've fed for days, weeks, months, years, fed you. It's got to be like a light switch. Holy smokes. I recognize something. I've been making your mortgage payment. I saw your vacation pictures on Facebook. That was a beautiful place to be. I recognize I helped fund that. Your kids just got accepted to college. I recognize I helped fund that. It can't be through blackmail. Threat and blackmail doesn't work, folks. God gave us this internal program. It's called fight or flight. When we're threatened, we run. Think about this for a second, off topic, but I love this story. We watch uh, 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 America's Funniest Videos. I don't know what's over in the UK, but essentially it's just bloopers that people record bloopers. Watch this blooper. I don't have anyone in specific. Think about this. Anytime a little kid is in the cake, Pudding, ice cream, chocolate all over his face, dripping off. And the mom comes in and she goes, Jimmy, did you eat that cake? What does he say? No. <laughs> no. It's all over his face. We're programmed to lie. Think about this, right? This comes from birth. God put this in us. This is fight or flight. You know what Jimmy can't do? He can't run. His legs are this big. I can't get away from mommy, so what am I going to do? I got to lie. No, mommy, I didn't have the cake. It's all over his face. Think about this now. Think about this. Watch the videos. It's hysterical. They come up with goofy stories. It's hysterical. But what I identified when I see that is that's our program. That's our state of being. God gave that to us. That's a protection. Think about this now. Let's reverse this for a second. What if mommy came into the room and said, Jimmy, mommy has cake on her face. Mommy's got the cake in her hand. Jimmy, I love this cake. This chocolate is delicious. Don't you think so? He's going to agree. Yes, mom, it was great because he's not being threatened. He's now right in line with mommy because she told him it's okay. I'm eating it too. You see that? 
This is the mental mechanics that I teach. You got to understand where you're getting this from. So for me to just say, I'm going to help you make more money. I got to dig a little bit with you too. Where's your state? Where's your mind? The most valuable training tool I've ever had in my entire life was every one of our calls at the mortgage company was recorded. So I never had to rely on what you think you said. We would pull up the recording. That helped our people become so awesome because when I gave them training tips, when we would role play, I would say, run to the phone. Don't think. Don't think. Get to the phone and do what we just did. And then I would listen to the call. We'd play it back. Wow. I can never argue with what you think you said, but the tape tells the story. And that's how we can improve because if you don't have somebody walking with you, I have to believe what you think you did. Mm -mm. Record the call on my phone, which is not at my reach right now. I record calls. I tell people, please record your call. How am I going to help you? I'm going to fight with you because you tell me what you think you said. Record the call. Then we can listen to the whole mechanicalness of the call, your articulation, the mood you were in. Were you smiling on the phone? How did they respond? Did you say what I asked you to say? Wow, what a revelation got to hear the call. Incredibly important. We will accelerate your growth when we hear the call. That's my long-winded answer, Peter, to ask the, to give you this answer to the question. What do you actually say, Paul? What's the script? What's the role play? How do you get these people to be attentive? I could tell it to you too. I'm blue in the face, and I have my own recorded calls that I share with people. But if I send you out to the wolves and get you to try and survive without help, you're not going to survive. Because you're going to fall back into your conditioning. Absolutely. Whatever it is that you think you've always, yeah, that, that's the challenge. So I can give you the scripting, but until we role play this out and practice and rehearse, that's the only way you're going to have true revision. If I'm going to recode your program chip, your computer chip, your brain, this is recoding, folks. We've got to do it together. It can't just be, oh, I'm going to attend this you know, 30 minutes uh, rah-rah. You're great. You have greatness within you. Go get them, buddy. No, it'll never happen. It'll never happen. We got to do it together because I'm fighting upstream with the two years, 20 years, 30 years of preconditioned thought process that you're bringing to this call or this interaction or this meeting. So the idea is when you have the book, you need to be taught something. We need to be taught about the data. How many people did you feed? Okay, now let's talk about teaching you how to teach them. You can't go around threatening people to say, give me something because they will run. It's built in us. What you do is through encouragement, through education, through empowerment, you hold them accountable. But you've got to do it together. The entire, Andrew said it best earlier, education. You have to teach them how to contribute because if they already knew how to do it, they would be doing it. They don't know how. We are built as selfish human beings. Me, me, me. I'm coming out and saying, okay, let's talk about something for a second. Right now, it's been a one-way street. And you know what? I love you. I think you're fantastic. Your service is wonderful. Thank you for dinner and the coupons and the play that you took me to. Thank you for, I love it. I love it. I love it. But I've now tied up with Paul Conti, Andrew, and Peter Michael, and I'm learning different strategies that I'm bringing to my people as a gift, not a threat. It's a gift, folks. If it's something that you have to do, it's a chore. If it's something you get to do, it's a gift. Well, that's a recode. We got to talk that's about that from day one. Patient. That's perspective. Yeah, that's Huge. perspective. I spend an awful lot of time talking about perspective. So that's my perspective. So I, I don't have to go pick up my kid after baseball practice. I get to go pick up my kid after baseball practice that I'm healthy enough. I have a vehicle, I have gas, I have insurance. I have a kid who's able to pay or play baseball. What a gift that is. When you alter that perspective, things and life, they're easier. So getting back to the long-winded response to your very brief question, when you take a look at your production, we then start to analyze the data and we identify where the waterfalls are. Then we get together with our people and we educate. We empower we hold accountable. You have to do that because threatening people to give you something back will only push them away. That's an internal code. I don't like to be threatened. But I do want to be part of something bigger than myself. And if you present it as such, I want to learn. My two most awesome questions. Are you interested and willing? Are you interested and willing to learn? 
how to contribute to the growth of my business in the same manner I've contributed to yours. Interested and willing to learn. Not through threat, folks. Education and a big old lovey hug. Let's change perspective then and go from a non-producing agent with very little or no book of business, no true waterfalls. Oh, you're playing chess with me, huh? You think you're going to get me with that pawn to rook? I like that. All right, we got a brand new guy. Just got out of real estate school. Let's go. You could go that extreme where you could be like, I've been doing it a year, sold like one house, two houses. No, just just got out of a real estate school. I think that's... I'll take you right out of real estate school. All right. Come on over here. So the first thing that we have to do, that we want to do, that we get to do with this person is, I've got to have a conversation to understand where their head is. What are you doing in real estate? So this is very, very deep. But from my perspective, I don't teach people find your passion or find your why. I'm not necessarily such a fan of that because cup of water. That's a big cup, Peter. I do like that cup of water. That was awesome. That's you. So I'll take a cup of those cup of waters. <laughs> so from my perspective, I believe, as I'm indicating to you now, my passion, my why, that's self centered. This is just from Paul Conti's perspective. doesn't have to be anybody else's. I believe that when you concede this life, when you concede and say, God, what did you design me for? When you end up doing what the designer has created you to do, everything is easy. It's not hard. If you keep fighting upstream, it's probably because you're ego-driven, ego, edging God out. You're ego-driven. Your pride's got the better of you. And I'm going to do this because I'm going to do this. Wait a second. Through humility and a big old cup of Goya, I'm not sponsored by them. I just like Goya. Get off your ass. So I always have these cans of beans with me. So as an example, when you do this, when you say, okay, you know what? Let me give this up. As you remember from the story I shared with you earlier, I kept trying to forge ahead. I. I, I, when I eventually got on my knees and said, I clearly don't have the ability to do this. Lead me, guide me. What tools and gifts have you given me? Where am I supposed to be? Right here. This is the gift that God gave me. This is, this is not schooled. You know my schooling history. I don't have a degree in this. This is my gift from God that I'm required to share. And I share it as often as possible because here's what I think. If you don't use your gifts, you're going to lose your gifts. And this is a big gift. This alters lives, not through me. I'm just the messenger to share it. So when I get somebody fresh out of school, whatever it is that their pursuit is, if it is indeed real estate, we've got to understand this stuff first. Let's put all that aside because that's pretty heavy. Now let's talk about how are we going to get people to want to trust you to buy or sell a house for and with them. Let's take inventory. Taking inventory says, let's talk about in this scenario, I want you to write down every single human being that makes money from you in any capacity. Andrew, you have hair. I'm going to make the assumption you don't cut your own hair. That'd be a correct assumption. (laughs) Wonderful. So that means you go to a hairdresser or a barber, yes? Correct. Yep. Not scripted, folks. I didn't set them up. I've only paid them to say nice things about me today. So I have not scripted this particular scenario. But now let's think about this. We're going to start with data. You go to a barber, which means the barber made money from you. Money left your pocket and went to his or hers. Write them down. Let's take a look at the data. Why is that important? Because when I ask most realtors, how much business have you closed last week, last month, last quarter, or last year from your hairdresser? Zero. Let's go to the data. I should probably write it. Let me know if you want me to write it. I'll write it. Here's the data. Let's be conservative. The next time you sit with your business partner, oh, you don't call them a hairdresser, Polly? No, that's my business partner. That is my business partner that happens to cut hair. Mental shift. Business partner, why is that? You're on my payroll. You're on my payroll. I'm the CEO of a company. The company is me. My coaching for CEOs corporation, CEO, chief executive officer. It's not for some guy that sits in a a big old tower up there. That's for every human being. You're the chief executive officer of your life. You don't have to be in charge with a title in order to take charge. What are you doing right now with these gifts? 
You pay a hairdresser. That means the hairdresser is on your payroll. You're the owner of a company. Mental shift. So now when I sit with my employee, when I sit with my business partner, what am I doing? I'm collaborating and strategizing on locating the cups of water because the hairdresser is a waterfall. Let's look at the data. You guys are now required. It's not something you have to do. It's something you get to do. It's a gift. Next time you sit with your hairdresser, ask him or her, how many people do you sit with a day? Let's be conservative, gentlemen. Five. Primarily because I already worked out the numbers, so I get to look smarter than I am. If it's five people a day, it's 25 people a week. It's 100 a month. It's 1,200 people a year. Do you mean to tell me that 1,200 people sat in your chair and not one of them bought or sold a house? Impossible. You mean 1,200 people sat in your chair and not one of them got a divorce? Ooh. You see where I'm going? Divorce attorney. There's no real or thinking like that. I do. So now you're sitting with your waterfall that's going to sit with five people today. Think about what a hairdresser knows. Everything about everybody that sits in that chair. When they're getting married, divorced, buying, selling, new job, downsizing, kid, dog, relocate. They know everything. And you're sitting with the person that's going to talk to 100 people this month. I guarantee you every single agent that just got out of agent school is not going to talk to 100 people this month. And even if they were, they're not going to know every intimate detail about their life like a hairdresser does. Come on now. You are going into a waterfall and you're leaving dry. What are you doing? You should be soaked. You went into Niagara Falls and you didn't get wet? Are you kidding me? So what I do is we analyze every person that's making money from you in any capacity. That hairdresser knows somebody today. That's getting married, getting divorced, buying or selling a house. They know somebody today because they're going to talk to five people. But you find out the data for your hairdresser. Hairdresser that only sits with five people isn't making any money. Five people, $10 tip, 50 bucks a day, they're not making any money. I use conservative numbers not to oversell my concepts. Five a day is 1,200 a year. That means that's a book of about 300 actual clients Again, repeating themselves, coming back into the chair. But you're talking about 1,200 people this year. That's one. Think about that. Do you have an accountant? Andrew, just out of curiosity, do you have an accountant? Uh, I do. I absolutely do because I hate you do. it. <laughs> He's scared to even answer me because he doesn't want to be going down this path. But, <laughs> but let's talk about that for an example, right? So we just did the hairdresser. I just taught you that. Yes, there's scripting. Yes, there's collaboration concept. Yes, yes, yes. We do all of that. But you've got a hairdresser, so you write the data down. 1,200 people, waterfall. One aspect of my pursuit today. Next one, accountant. The average accountant has 200 clients before they have to hire help. Where did you get that from, Paul? Interviewing hundreds of accountants. It's in my playbook. I know the data. So if I've got an accountant, I know they've got 200 clients. The data also reveals that between 8 and 10% of their book buys or sells a house every year. So now we got what? Hairdresser, 1,200. We've got accountant, 200. You see the massiveness of what I'm talking about? These numbers, he's leaving so much money on the table, it's scary. Scary. How many of those 100 clients have an accountant? Scary. Massive. So you could take to somebody, you could talk to somebody who's got big numbers and say, we can double, quadruple very quickly, or we could take somebody right out of class and say, we're going to get you out of the gate real quick. Oh, no, they told me it takes two years to get started. Run from them. Don't listen to a word they say, because if you believe that, you're right. You will always be right. I'm telling you right now, if you had a chance to talk to 25 people this week and just ask the BS question, BS, I teach everybody, just talk about BS. Hey, I'm just curious, as I'm cutting your hair, just out of curiosity, are you going to buy or sell a house this year? Got one. BS. Can you talk BS all day to your people? Hell yeah. It's easy. BS, BS, BS. Hey, accountant, just out of curiosity, are you interested and willing to learn how to contribute to my business in the same manner I've been contributing to yours for the past five years? Well, I'm not really a salesperson. I'm an accountant, so I have no personality or people skills. So how am I going to do that? Oh my gosh, I just offended a lot of people. Let, roll the tape back and delete that. Listen to me. The typical account is not out there doing what we're doing. 
But everybody trusts their accountant. Everybody trusts their accountant. So if you think about that, when they're sitting down doing their taxes, they could ask BS. Just out of curiosity, how the kids, college, how was your vacation? Just out of curiosity, you thinking of buying or selling a house this year? Oh, wonderful. Wait to meet Brad. He is my, he's a superstar. Let me make the phone call now. Brad, I'm sitting with Mary. She's considering selling her house soon. I'm going to connect you two. Oh, man. Come on now. Mic drop. Come on now. <laughs> I think one thing that I love about what you're doing, and it obviously is blatantly apparent um, from, like, you know, people who are watching, say, on video, or if you're listening to the podcast, um, go check it out on YouTube. Um, you'll see the board behind Paul and it's got lists of people to reach out to, right? Everything you're saying, there's basically, there's two huge, huge things that I've taken away from this is the whole waterfall one to many concept. You're not a one to one person, which is the same way I do business. I'm not a one to one person. I'm like, how can I figure out how we can leverage someone else? How that, you know, we can work together, we partner and then I help them, they help me. And I get a book of business from that as to that. It's about one to many. Um, hey, thanks for listening to this episode. Now, before you go, we're giving access to a private training we did where we revealed the top three niches to get listings today completely for free. So if you want access, you can go and download that training at EliteAgentSecrets.com. We're regularly releasing new trainings, guides and cheat sheets so make sure to head over to eliteagentsecrets.com and sign up so you don't miss out